In this video we have selected 10 crypto related tweets that have aged like spoilt milk. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Crypto News from Ramsers Academy. Before starting, please like, comment and share the video. Let's start. To put it lightly, it has been a wild year for the crypto sector. In the span of less than 12 months, the third most valuable stablecoin imploded, leading to a domino effect that saw crypto lender Celsius go bankrupt, three Eros Capital's founders go runabout and one of crypto's most altruistic executives flown home in cuffs. In this video we have selected 10 crypto-related tweets that have aged like spoilt milk. Duquan, steady lads on May 10th. Just as the Algo stablecoin formerly known as TerraUSD started to fall below its dollar peg, the Terraform Labs founder attempted to allay fears of a further depeg, tweeting, deploying more capital, steady lads. Well, we all know what happened after. The collapse of the Terra ecosystem in May 2022 saw more than $40 billion wiped from the market in that month alone. Since then, Duquan and the remaining Terra community have tried to revive the project with a newer stablecoin coming into the works. Terra USD has since been rebranded to Terra Classicist, USTC, and is worth two cents at the time of writing. Duquan, your size is not size. Next on the list is Quan's famous response to crypto trader Algod, who outlined on March 9 that if Luna breaks new ATHs I will short it with size. It's a big ass Ponzi, pretty sure VCs will also hedge their investments on perps. Quan then hit back by essentially calling Algod poor, stating, yeah but your size is not size before adding, $10 short incoming, everyone take cover. This of course was memed back to Quan on many occasions during and after he went into damage control mode as Terra USD spiraled out of control. SBF, sell me all you want. Then go fuck off. Sam Bankman Fried, SBF, has a near endless amount of statements that likely look terrible in current circumstances. Not only has he lied about assets are fine but shortly before his company filed for bankruptcy, the FTX founder also left us with the $3 Solana meme. In a debate on Twitter from January, crypto trader Coin Mamba got under SBF skin in January 2021, suggesting that Sol was a great shorting opportunity over the price of $3. After a back and forth in which the two were trying to iron out a bet on the future price, SBF finally had enough of Coin Mamba's Sol taunting and said, I'll buy as much Sol as you have, right now, at $3. Sell me all you want. Then go fuck off. The comment became legendary in the crypto community, particularly after the price of Sol went to an all-time high of $259.96 on November 6, 2021. However, Coin Mamba appears to have had the last laugh, as Bankman Fried's firm catastrophically collapsed a year later. Replying to the nearly two-year-old thread, Coin Mamba gave Bankman Fried a taste of his own medicine. I'll buy everything you have, right now, at $3. Sell me all you want. Then go fuck off. Alex Mashinsky, all funds are safe. Amid the Luna fiasco in May, rumors started to float that Celsius was having liquidity issues and could be heading for serious trouble, while others had claimed the firm had already been completely wiped out. In a bid to quickly assure Celsius customers, Mashinsky responded to the rumors by stating in a May 12 tweet, notwithstanding the extreme market volatility, Celsius has not experienced any significant losses, adding, all funds are safe. These four words went on to become a harbinger of doom for the industry. A month later, on June 12, the firm paused all withdrawals. On July 13, it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Users are still battling to get even a portion of their funds back as we speak. Celsius, if you don't have free and unlimited access to your own funds, are they really your funds? Accompanying Mashinsky is a classic from Celsius Network, in which the firm was touting the whole unbank yourself catchphrase. The crypto lender often suggested it was more trustworthy than the banking system. In a November 14 tweet from 2019, Celsius Network tweeted, if you don't have free and unlimited access to your own funds, are they really your funds? Before adding, Unbank yourself with Celsius and join the next generation of financial services, no fees, no penalties, no lockups, just profit. That statement hasn't fared too well in 2022. Amid its Chapter 11 bankruptcy process, users have had zero access to their locked up funds, while profits are in doubt, too, considering they might not get all the funds back. Voyager, we have the experience too, whether any bear market. Following a similar line to Celsius and Mashinki, fellow bankrupted crypto lender Voyager published a lengthy Twitter thread in June, which now looks a bit out of place as 2022 comes to a close. In an attempt to assure customers that the company was safe during the bear market following the collapse of the Terra ecosystem, Voyager assured customers it carefully manages risk and its mission is to make crypto as simple as safe as possible. 
Our straightforward, low-risk approach to asset management is the result of our decades of experience leading companies through market cycles. We have the experience to back our decisions and weather any bear market. Over the next couple of weeks, it was widely reported that the company was facing liquidity issues, and by July 5th, Voyager had filed for bankruptcy. TechCrunch, the collapse of ETH is inevitable. Next in line is a tweet dating back to 2018 from fintech news outlet TechCrunch that reads, the collapse of ETH is inevitable. The tweet is accompanied by an extremely bearish article in which the author, Jeremy Rubin, predicts that ETH, the asset, not the Ethereum network itself, will go to zero. Rubin, who disclosed at the end of the article that he was a Bitcoin and Litecoin holder at the time, bizarrely suggests that if the Ethereum network completes everything on its roadmap, no one will have any use for the asset. At the time of creating this video, Ether sits at $1,196 and presents a host of reasons for people to want to hold it, staking rewards, borrowing, lending and deflationary tokenomics. Additionally, it also serves utility purposes, such as pushing through transactions on the largest smart contract network on the market. Avraham Eisenberg, what are you gonna do, arrest me? Avraham Eisenberg, the crypto trader behind the $110 million exploit of decentralized exchange Mango Markets, makes the list due to a tweet from October that looks terrible in current circumstances. The tweet itself revolves around a rather harmless back and forth regarding Eisenberg's incorrect use of the ad Inversibr tag, with Sheik Swampert noting, you don't call Inversibr on yourself dude. In response, Eisenberg said, what are you gonna do, arrest me? As of this week, Eisenberg has actually been arrested and is facing market manipulation charges over the Mango Markets exploit, which he had consistently maintained was a highly profitable trading strategy facilitated via legal open market actions. As such, this tweet has fast become a popular meme that will most likely live on for a long time in crypto Twitter folklore. Fortune, SBF, the next Warren Buffet American business magazine Fortune has also got itself on this list for speaking in glowing terms of SBF back in August. In a Twitter thread, the publication labeled him the de facto leader of the crypto community before suggesting that he was the next Warren Buffet, crypto's white knight and prince of risk. Kevin O'Leary, I'm going to use FTX to increase my allocation shark tanks Kevin O'Leary, also known as Mr. Wonderful, makes the list for his backing of FTX and its former CEO, Sam Bankman Fried. O'Leary's now deleted tweet came on August 10, 2021, after he signed a deal to become an FTX spokesperson. In the tweet, he emphasized, Finally solved my compliance problems with hashtag cryptocurrencies I'm going to use FTX to increase my allocation and use the platform to manage my portfolios. Unfortunately for O'Leary, FTX was anything but compliant, and the millionaire said he has likely lost the entire $15 million he was paid to be FTX's spokesperson after taxes, agent fees and all the crypto he kept on the exchange was lost after the firm's bankruptcy. That was all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share. See you soon.